pretty much turnkey. Everything's ready to go. Today on Problem Solved, we're teaming up with Rocket Mortgage to help you understand everything you need to know when it comes to selling your current home and buying a new one. Something tells me this house has good bones. What are some of the reasons you see people move from their current home into a new one? I love the analogy of a home being like a pot for a plant. It grows and grows and grows to the point you might need to repot it into another pot, a bigger pot. What a cool front door. Wow, look at this. Oh, this is great. So unexpected from outside, these huge windows, all this right. light. Isn't that beautiful? It's almost a indoor-outdoor type space. Big living room? There's actually two living rooms in this house, so there's plenty of room to grow into. Plenty of room for activities here. But then as the plant continues to grow, it might be so healthy and thriving that it's time to take part of it and plant it somewhere else. Well now, that pot feels a little too big for that plant and it might want to downsize into a smaller, cozier pot. I see what you did there. Well, to answer your question more directly, I see many reasons such as location change, career progression, growing families, but then also downsizing, especially for the empty nesters. This home doesn't have a traditional layout, but it's a lot of room and a lot of flexibility here. It's actually got a really good feel to it. It's a good size and there's so much natural light. I love this room. I probably hang out in here all the time. These windows, the view of the backyard. There's even a doggy door. Oh, where's the dog? <laughs> I'm gonna go find the dog. There's certainly a lot to consider, especially if you're moving to a new city or a new state. Absolutely. The good news is you've done it before, so you have that experience to lean on, but you also wanna lean on the experience of your real estate agent who has done it many times. It can help guide you through the entire process from start to finish. I think this is it, just <gasps> down the street. Okay, I'm liking the looks of it so far. Ooh. Here are five important things to consider when buying your next home. Number one, location. The location of the home isn't just where it physically is on the map, but what is the community that you're moving into? What is the neighborhood like? I think that's why they say location, 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 because they mean location the house, location the community, and location the nearby shopping and dining, right? Map out all those nearby amenities. Things like work, you can even do like a test commute, schools, shopping, even the airport. All your most important destinations. Or a one-stop shop like mom's. And of course, you can do this all digitally, but this is more fun. You also want to make sure there's room to grow. Look how big this is. All right, you sit down there, I'll sit down here. I mean, look at all this space. I have to yell to talk to you from here. Right, there's so much great space for eating, for entertaining, for hosting. It's nice to have these tall ceilings in here. Really opens up the space. I love the layout of this kitchen. A lot of cool design features in this house. The house is four bed, four bath, and still feels really cozy. It's a spacious home and there's even more room in the backyard. Consider the size of the house as well as the size of the lot. Maybe the property has room for a future addition. Just taking some quick measurements for my future bocce ball court. Keep an eye out for those non-bedrooms. Right now it's being used as a kid's playroom, but it can grow and change as the family grows. I love that rock wall. I'm gonna have to give that a try later. <laughs> a den, a loft, an office, a basement, a third car garage, any kind of flex space. Even though they might not count as bedrooms, they open up a lot of possibilities. It could be a uh, office or study. A workout room, a homework room, or a guest room. There are so many possibilities. You said this would be a good gym. I'm definitely breaking a sweat. I climbed all the way up to the top. I really love the layout of this house, but uh, this kitchen is not quite my style. And it's true, focus on the bones of the house. It's really about the layout and the whole structure itself. There's something I like about the layout of this kitchen, mm -hmm. it just maybe needs some refinement. So don't let a paint color, a countertop, or minor cosmetic damage cloud your judgment. Those things can always be changed or fixed later. And you can see this as an opportunity to reno, or you could just start with some paint. If there's a house you really like, cruise around the neighborhood at different times on different days. This will help you understand the full dynamics of the neighborhood. I love when I see kids riding their bikes in the neighborhood. After all, if you've already bought a home once, I know you can do it again. Here's the big chicken or egg argument. What comes first, selling your current home or buying a new one? Ideally, the stars align and you sell your current home the day before you close on your next one. I've seen it happen, but at the end of the day, you can't control the outcomes or the timetables. But let's start with buying before selling. Certainly a benefit is that you don't have to find a short-term rental and you don't have to move twice. With that being said, you may be on the hook for two mortgage payments. So homeowners need to have a plan for how they're going to pay for both mortgages or how to sell their home fast. Ooh, I could see how that could get a little tricky. So what about 
selling before buying. Well, right off the bat, if you sell before you buy your next home, you're no longer on the hook for two mortgages. And you won't feel rushed when you're looking for your next home, especially if you have a place to stay after closing. This affords you the ability to really take your time and make sure that next home purchase is the right one. The downside being you'll have to move twice and you might live out of boxes for a while. So you're saying my best option is moving back in with my parents? <laughs> it could be, and for some people that's not so bad. Here are my five tips for selling your current home while buying your next home. Tip number one, assess the market for both properties. The biggest difference between buying your first home and buying your next home is you have an asset. Determine if you can use your current residence to help get where you wanna go. Tip number two, decide if now is the right time to make a move. While you might be in a hurry to get in your next home, remember that you're already in a home and sometimes the better choice is to wait. So work with your real estate agent to determine when might be the best time to sell. Tip number three, prepare to show your home. Even if you're weeks or months away from listing your home, take this time to declutter and throw away anything you won't be taking with you. Go around the home and fix imperfections, like holes or scratches left by artwork. If you have a room painted a bright color, repaint it with a more neutral tone. Tip number four, work with your partners. If you want to simplify the process of buying your next home while selling your current home, be sure to work with a lender like Rocket Mortgage to help you get pre-approved before looking at homes. Once you do, you'll want to list your home with a professional real estate agent. That way, you'll always have someone to answer your questions and help figure out your situation. Rockin' Homes can help match you with a list of top-rated, vetted, and verified partner agents that are standing by to help you buy and sell your next home. Tip number five, funding your next home. Just like when you were a first-time home buyer, it's always a great idea to consider budgeting, cutting back on non-essential expenses, or even setting up automatic savings. Saving enough for a down payment doesn't have to feel like an uphill battle. Rocket Mortgage is there to help guide you through that process. Remember, you're no longer a first-time home buyer. You own a home, and that home will be included in your debt-to-income ratio. You may even want to consider including a home sale contingency in your contract. This clause allows you to back out of the purchase if your current home doesn't sell, protecting you from the financial burden of owning two properties simultaneously. I really love all the trees back here. There's some fruit trees even. They are so well established. That's the perks of having a home with some history. So once you've found the next home of your dreams, here are some things you need to consider. The most important thing is to stick to your budget. Growing families come with unexpected costs that you need to prepare for. Yes, I think it's always best to only spend what you can afford. You wanna get an understanding of the total costs, closing costs, repairs, renovations. If it blows your budget, you have to know when it's time to walk away. I think there's the right home out there for everyone. It just may take some time to find it. Next, be confident when submitting your offer. You never want to submit an offer on a home that you're not 100% committed to purchasing or you risk losing your earnest money deposit. Giving this money signals to the owner that you're serious about your offer. And lastly, you've done this before, so you can do it again. Remember to be confident in your decision, but never stop learning. Investing in homeownership education can really help you avoid costly mistakes, prioritize smart investments that offer reliable returns, and build equity in your home. Remember, lean on your team. They can help guide you through the whole process. You're not in this alone.